Hello, Nardig here, and welcome to another video log, channel update, however you want to call it. So it's been two months, almost two months since the last update, so I figured let's uh, see how things are going since things have been going pretty good lately. So I want to give you uh, an update of what I've been doing, what I've been trying, what I've been thinking, and where I'm probably going to go. So. First up, I passed the 25,000 views mark, which is, it's a, it's a nice, nice milestone thing to say, to see. Also, 55 subscribers to the channel currently, so I'm very happy for that, I think. As to all of you who are currently subscribing, if you're not and you're watching this, hit the button to increase it by yet another one. So, let's recap. Two months ago, I had about 36 subscribers, 38 subscribers. It rose to 42 and it flatlined for a while. And now I'm at 55. So what happens in between? I did a couple of new games. Um, I noticed the human resource machine, I think the day it launched, uh, just pure happenstance, but I noticed it and was like, wait, I think I've seen the trailer for this a couple months back. It's out, let's play it. So, Human Research Machine, I'll put a link in the description um, to my Let's Play series for that. It's a programming game. Similar to TAS 100, both are programming games. You just you know, manipulate low level instructions. But while TS100 is a hardcore programming game, the Human Resource Machine is a very, very approachable version of a programming game. <coughs> There's no typing, everything you do is with the mouse. Even to the frustration, if you have to make labels, you actually have to hand draw with your mouse the labels that go in the code. But hey, that adds to the charm. It's nicely, uh, nicely drawn, music is great. I mean, it's made by one of the, the devs who also made World of Blue and you definitely notice some of the touches and it's just a fun game to play. So I've been doing that and I've gotten some views for that. Uh, Grim Dawn, we're going really good, been uh, looking forward for a while to cover that. So that's a new series, also drew in a couple of viewers. Various Path of Exile series I've done in between and especially the, the Dark Shrine League. Actually, I sent out a tweet. I mean, I, I recorded eight episodes in a row on launch night for the, the Dark Shrine League. And then after that, recording that, when it was uploading to YouTube and processing and all that stuff, I tweeted out, you know, that I just recorded a whole bunch of, uh, of footage and that I was enjoying it. Um, it's mysterious, it's random. Um, I had my, my doubts somewhat about where it was gonna go but it, it so far it's just one another random addition and if I let go of the mindset that I can just purely determine what's gonna happen since it's just random I've gave, given up on trying to understand what's happening but it's just a random boost and yeah it's it's, it's an interesting way to play playing a duel list again just doing it right this time after the unfortunate death of my previous duel list but I tweeted out and the, de the developers retweeted me. And that led to quite a bunch of exposure to my channel. So if you're one of the people who's watching this, who entered my channel via that tweet, welcome. You are one of the people that helped grow the channel. So very happy for that. And after that last week, the fall of the Dungeon Guardians. Yet another random title I spotted this time I didn't even know it was gonna come out, but I spotted it in, in the in the Steam new releases list. And it's like, hey, that looked interesting. So watch the videos. It's like, wow, this looks really cool. So I started recording and just launched a video. I think it was up. I mean I, I record all my videos 60 frames per second, 1440p. So those pet puppies, they take a bit to upload. I got a fast connection, so that works, but YouTube takes a while to process them. So it takes about two to three hours for YouTube to process them at least to 1080p quality, three to four hours to get it to 40, 40p. So once the video was out and it was available in, I think, 1080p, that's also the point where I made the video public. I 
linked it. Um, basically, I entered a bit into the community, gave some feedback to, to the dev. And a lot of people actually entered the channel via that video and the subsequent Let's Play series. And I'm having a lot of fun. I, I'm actually, because the developer is actively developing the game, I mean, it, it's one developer. It's one guy who made that entire game. He had some, some freelancers do some art and some music for him, but for the rest, all the things he did by himself. So I always like games like that. I really like the, the indie game effort. And it shows. I mean, every day he patches the game, sometimes two or three patches a day. Basically, as people report problems on the Steam forums, he fixes them and patches them within 24 hours, usually. So that's excellent. I mean, I spotted a couple of bugs. He immediately jumped on that and made the game better. So the game already started out really cool and it's been just improving ever since. And I'm really enjoying that. And the game is just a lot of fun. So I, I, every day I record an episode and it goes live the next day. And then I wait for feedback, patches, things like that, record another one and just and so forth. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on level two right now. There's at least eight levels, maybe 15. No, there's there's 15 mon uh, 15 enemies that escape, so there should be at least 15 uh, levels to the game. So I'll be playing that for a while, probably next coming month or two or whatever. I'll uh, I'll see. Having a lot of fun with it. So let's see what else. Yeah, I think that that's. That's about it, isn't it? Just quickly checking, did I forget anything? Oh yeah, um, Duskers. <laughs> Can't forget Duskers. I mean, it, it's the first game I actually got a review code for, from uh, the, the developer or from the PR agent who also has a game dev background who actually reached out to me. He's like, hey, here's a key, uh, go cover it or something. Uh, really no strings attached, so that was pretty cool. I was pretty hyped about that. And I've been playing the game, and that that's a similar story. I mean, it's it's single dev with some some help from other people, but one core dev on the game, and he's been just slowly and steadily improving the game as well. Uh, I think a patch every week or two on average now. I think, yeah, roughly a small patches, large patches, but but the game has been been making progress. Um, he also now actively responds to feedback, is active on a whole bunch of forums and things. Um, yeah, that's yet another interesting concept. Um, it's quirky, but it's it's fun to play. Definitely makes you feel panicked or... <laughs> yeah, mostly panicked in, in, in situations where you don't want to be and then you're happy that you managed to get out with some of your drones alive. But that's also a series that I'm, you know, I've, I've, I'm currently recording about once a week, just to not burn out on the game as it's being developed and patched, because no new content is being added to the game. So I'm just s slowing down the releases a bit to make sure that you know, every time there's a new patch, I can just release a new video to cover some of it and uh, have two or three episodes on that patch to develop to basically discover what was added and changed and then after that another patch is probably going to be released and then i have a couple of episodes to cover that i think that's for games that are under active development that's probably a nice one especially since duskers it's 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 it feels more like a sandbox than that you're act actually involved in the storyline that's the first couple of levels, uh, you know, the first ten levels or so, you're, you're, yeah, you're, how can I say this? You're trying to discover how the game works. You discover new modules, new enemy types, the derelicts that you encounter, they become progressively more unstable. So every once in a while there's like a random radiation leak. Uh, in a room so you need to make sure it's closed off um, more and more rooms become unscannable so it's harder to actually figure out where the enemies are so the game the, the difficulty ramps up 
new mechanics get introduced and you're learning a lot. After about a dozen, a dozen derelicts uh, or a couple of systems, you've seen a lot of the things that the game currently has to offer. And at that point, you could be left wondering like, okay, what's next? Well, there is a storyline in the game, but it's very much pushed to the background. And if you're like me, I'm very mechanics driven in my gameplay. I like to discover things. Um, if the mechanics, if I figured most of them out, I fall back on story. If the story is not really there, for me, interest starts to fade. So that's, I think that's, that's the weakness, that the story is not as strongly present as it might be, but no, whatever, it's the developer makes his own choices. Um, I've given some suggestions, but on the end, no, developer is the developer. I'm just a random guy on a YouTube. Um, so, but I'm, I'll keep covering that because I'm, I'm having fun and I still keep getting into weird random situations I haven't encountered yet because the difficulty does keep ramping up. Still hoping to find a stealth module because in an earlier playthrough I had a stealth module and those things are freaking awesome. You really change your gameplay dynamics but I haven't found one yet. So. Just have to keep looking for one. Okay, so uh, what else? I'm just looking through all the videos. So oh yeah, Diablo. I did some coverage for Diablo 3 because season 4 started with patch 2.3. And most of the time when there's a new season starting, especially when there's a new patch with a new season combination, that you're gonna do more of the time, a lot of people are looking for builds to play. So one of the most popular search queries on YouTube is going to be Diablo 3 build, insert class here. And then if it's for hardcore, they add hardcore, patch 2.3 is gonna add it to it. That's a very popular search string. I happened to have thought out a Witch Doctor build which uses Haunt as its primary attack. Uh, so you're just you know, putting damage uh, uh, over time, uh, ghosts on everybody to just burn their life away. You wield a big two-handed weapon so that Haunt is gonna do a lot of damage because it scales off of weapon damage and two-hander, it's very slow, very high amount of damage and Haunt, it takes the absolute damage your weapon takes rather than the damage over time thing. So it's, it's a pretty effective way to, to level. And because I'm primarily a hardcore player in Diablo, or actually in a lot of action RPGs, I like to play hardcore just to increase the difficulty, make it more challenging and focus myself to be more defensive. I build tanks out of everything, including Witch Doctor. I play melee wizards um, in hardcore and they can be tankier and then most people have with other classes in softcore. So yeah, so for the Witch Doctor, the Haunt build, I designed it as a very safe build. I leveled it through all the way to, I think a minute to 23 or 24. I'm doing great rift, 20 or something, 22, I think is the highest I tried. And then I died due to lag spike. And now uh, talking with some friends afterwards, Basically, a lot of people were saying like, you know, we've given up on hardcore because you know, Battle.net is just too unstable. Um, you know, you glitch out a couple seconds, boom, you're dead. So, yeah, but the build itself is safe and I was pushing it a little bit by going into um, Torment 4. Probably should have stayed on Torment 3 for a little bit longer, but on 4 I could play and I was pretty safe as long as I had a stable connection because then I could just cast things and move out if things got hairy. But you know, if you freeze up and you have a character that's slightly weaker um, because you're pushing a higher difficulty, you just lose it. But that, that's kind of a bit of a tangent. I had a build, so I made a video describing the build. I first recorded it at level 40. Describing the builds, basically, because the build starts at level 13 or 16. I think, I think it's 16, that's when you unlock Haunt. Then between 16 and 23, you unlock all the skills you need to have the build running. Between level 23 and 70, you unlock new runes and you unlock extra skills. So for example, the Kogenshu, and you unlock it at 30. But you unlock those things over time and they enhance the build, but they don't change the build. So 
I made a video at level 40 describing the build and what I had up to that point with some gear choices and some lucky gear finds I had at that point. Made another video when I, just after I hit level 70, just to show the, the final form skill wise of the build up to that point. With some potential set choices I was going to look at. And then I made another video, I think once I hit Torment 2 or 3, when I had a couple of the set, gear, set pieces together. And that was a. So there was three videos in total that I made. And they were also pretty unpopular. So that was also nice. Now if you and so that that's a theme I've I've spotted in the last two months. I, I should maybe should have spotted it earlier, but I don't know. I, I tend to get lost in just in my own thoughts and not pay too much attention. So I sometimes I'm a bit slow to discover things that probably everybody already knows. If you make something that's uh, that pertains to a current topic, it's gonna get searched for a lot, it's gonna get found a lot, you're gonna get a lot of views. And if at the end of the episode you ask people nicely to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, then you actually might help your channel grow a little bit. And especially the, you know, the, the last couple of weeks, just trying to engage a little bit more with the Steam community for new games that launch, get uh, involved in it, uh, provide some, 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 some feedback to the developers, uh, leave a review with a link to the first episode of my Let's Play in case people want to actually watch a gameplay in addition to reading the review. All those things, they have helped. I've also started posting um, <coughs> new videos to my Twitter channel. Might be that my follow long time followers are getting sick to death of these videos, but some videos do get a number of uh, clicks and as for example with the Path of Exile, uh, sometimes happy coincidences do happen. And YouTube, my YouTube channel is part of my life now. It's uh, some, yeah, I'm trying to make it, take it serious and use all the assets I've got. So, let's see, is that it? Yeah, I think most of the, that, that, that's it in regards to the new series I've started in the last two months. I did a let's look at the trove. Nobody cares. <laughs> I've got 11 views so far. So yeah, that wasn't really... Uh, ah, ah, okay, I'm just scrolling back to the to the videos and I've seen my, my old vlog. I think actually the... Oh no, that, that's, that's three days before my Witch Doctor build. So, another thing, for some reason, uh, a lot of people have started commenting on my videos. I, I really like it. Uh, you know, it feels like there's a community developing. So far, all the people on my channel have been absolutely awesome. Supportive, questions, helpful tips, uh, pointing out where I, I missed opportunities for, for uh, you know, better plays. Um, but actually I had the developer of uh, Fall of the Dungeon Guardians drop by and post on my uh, post a comment as well. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of engagement and people have been watching my series videos more and more and more. So I think I've actually managed to find some things that people care about and that's good. Because no, that, that, that's one of the things for, for a YouTube channel. You can record videos all you want. If nobody watches them, at some point you're gonna get discouraged. So in this case, no view time has been going up tremendously lately. Uh, average time watched per video has been going up. And that's good. And I think that's also one of the metrics that YouTube values a lot more. I mean, in the back end, the, the, the analytics side, it used to be that they used the number of views as a primary metric. So that's the thing they always sorted on, that's the thing they always showed, that's the thing they always paid attention to. And the time watched was the secondary thing. So that was shown next to it, but it wasn't the primary thing they paid attention to. And that's always the thing I paid attention to, how, ma how much times have peaceful people watched. And that's now finally they made a change, so they prioritized the time watched first and the number of views secondarily. So that's a, that, that's a nice change. 
So I might be getting some boost from that as well because people are watching things more. My channel gets a higher rating uh, or gets weight a little higher and that way I get some more exposure. So let's see, I've talked about the games, I've talked about what I'm currently thinking that I'm doing right to why the, the channel is growing. So that's a theory that that's ongoing. I keep testing it. Um, you know, I hope in a, in a month's time I might have 70 or 80 subscribers. It would be nice if I hit 100 by the end of the day. That, that's, that's a personal goal. I have 100 subscribers by the end of the year. I was saying day, wasn't I? I mean the year. That's, by the end of the day, that would be insane because I've actually passed the end of the day already. But yeah, okay. Um, just going off topic again. So yeah, future. In the past, I had some issues just keeping up with the schedule, just doing too much things besides YouTube and work, and I didn't have really a lot of time for YouTube. Now I've been just better at scheduling, um, just just no planning out what uh, series I'm gonna record, uh, what episodes I'm gonna launch when. Uh, how often I'm gonna uh, launch episodes so I know also how often to record things and I try to record things now basically a day in advance so it was when uh, Tuesday and midnight past so it's actually technically Wednesday already but all the videos that are gonna launch on Wednesday so that will be tomorrow or today by the time you see it or whenever so I've already recorded all those episodes and I've also recorded a couple of things for Thursday already. So I have worked a little bit in advance. So if, I don't know, for example, tomorrow I decide to go to the cinema, then I can without feeling guilty or having to rush things in between for recording. A couple of things like, for example, Fall of the Dungeon Guardians, I try to not record too much in advance because the game is under such active development that I want to take advantage of every patch that's made to the game. But I try to strike a balance there. For example, uh, Path of Exile doesn't really get major patches during a league, only after the league. So I can just burst record a couple of uh, episodes every time I go through. Um, for Grim Dawn, similarly, there are small patches. I think see today a patch launched with a number of balance changes. But the major update, I think it's planned for the end of the month, so that's probably gonna be another week or two. There's going to be really nice things in the, the next Grim Dawn the Beta 28. There's going to be some kind of constellation system, which reminds me a little bit of the Path of Exile skill tree combined with the whole constellation concept from Skyrim, because it's called constellation. So looking forward to Beta 28 there. Um, so for the rest, yeah, just. Uh, I'm gonna continue with what I'm doing. So, human resource machine, I'm about halfway through. From my estimation, there's about 40 puzzles in the game. I just solved 23. I guess 23, yeah, 23. So I got 70 more to go, but they are getting trickier. So I'm probably gonna have to spend one episode per puzzle now. Um, maybe half solving one and then you know, taking five minutes to explain how I managed to solve the puzzle that I previously partially covered and then continue with that um, but I'm releasing about two videos a week for that because in the beginning I could just sit start uh, my recording and just play and I could cover five to ten puzzles I'd slow down to five and slow down to two or three and now I'm on about one puzzle per episode maybe one and a half if I'm lucky they're getting trickier. They are, um, and because I want to provide not just a working solution, but if I provide an optimal solution, it's the same trap I fall into with the S100. So that means I sometimes I have to sit down and I'm just working on it for an hour or an hour and a half. And then when I've figured out, I show the working solution. And then I you know, take another 15 or 20 minutes and try the next puzzle. At least get a working solution that that always works i mean the puzzles getting a working solution is not the problem optimizing it that's the problem and that's the same as with ts 100 uh, getting something that works 
Actually, that was slightly trickier, I think. But no, usually a uh, uh, puzzle within half an hour to an hour, you can get a solution. But it might take another hour to actually provide a optimized solution. And yeah, TS100 is actually, besides it, it's having issues for a while with my recording software. So it was just technically annoying. Sometimes I'd have to record an episode three times. I think the record is four times before it would actually work and not have all kinds of technical issues or overlays or things like that. That was really demotivating. And the puzzles were getting harder, so I had to dedicate blocks of time to it. Maybe sometimes, you know, half an evening or an evening if I had other things to do. And it was just too much of a time drain with all the other stuff that I had going on um, and other series I wanted to do. So that's why I dropped TS100. But I was actually looking back to the metrics and I see that people are still watching TS100. There's still a lot of attention for it. And even the last episodes I recorded. I think I have over 100 views for those, so that's pretty big for my channel's scale. So, given that my life is a bit more orderly now, and I've got things figured out in a better way, I might every once in a while, no, I'm not making too many promises there, I might every once in a while just record another episode for TS100 just to revisit it and continue the series and see if I can eventually solve all the puzzles. Not sure if I'm gonna go for full-blown hyper-optimized solutions anymore because that's a it, it, it's a major drain, and that's that's also part of the reason why I dropped it. So I think I'm just gonna go for solutions now, and then yeah. See, so then then that's two programming games that I'm covering. I've got two different uh, action RPGs with Grim Dawn and Path of Exile. I've got a dungeon crawler with Fall of the Dungeon Guardians. I got a kind of tactical puzzle thingamajig with Duskers. So there's some variety going on there. Um, let's see. Next month there's going to be another Path of Exile League, a major league. They haven't announced anything yet. So yeah, um, I have no clue what it's going to be about. But I'll. I'm, gonna have to see I've been playing a lot of Path of Exile um, lately uh, sometimes even playing two series uh, mixed I mean I had the I had the, the flashback league going on uh, I had the, the Tempest Paladin that became the fallen Paladin after he fell before that I had the Warband Switch before that I had Beta Ranger and I think I had another Beta Ranger and I had a Templar and a Witch. I've, I've played a lot of Path of Exile and as a lot of people who play Path of Exile say sometimes you just need to step away from the game a bit um, just to you know get it out of your system and then just jump back in full blown. So I think we, I will finish the, the duelist. Um, he finish it by accidentally killing him, um, not in as stupid a way as the last time, I hope. I hope, yes. Um, but then I think I'll just take a, a short break from Path of Exile. And depending on how the new leaks gonna turn out, I might jump in then, or I might wait a couple weeks uh, before I start on that. Um, and I'll probably just play another character that I haven't played yet. So in this case, no, two times double list in a row. It's on one hand, now I'm perfecting a build. On the other hand, it's it's, it's similar-ish and it does not help keep me motivated, so to say. Um, it would be, in hindsight, a better choice to just play another character. But I think that's just, I, I just need a little break from the game. But I will be back because as far as action RPGs are concerned, it's still freaking good. And I'm also playing uh, Grim Dawn, which is also an action RPG. So I'm covering that genre with Grim Dawn then. And from the looks of it, I'll probably be playing Grim Dawn till the end of the year. There's just enough stuff going on. Um, and also, if I am done with Path of Exile, I mean, I'm currently, I've recorded 10 episodes. I may manage to make it to Act 3, so I got Act 3 and Act 4 left. So that's about 10, maybe 15 episodes remaining. So that should carry me to the end of the month. 
And once I'm done recording that, I might uh, step up uh, Grim Dawn a bit. Currently recording once every three days, I'm probably gonna increase that again to once every two days. But right now, because I'm doing Dungeon Guardians, Path of Exile, Grim Dawn, Human Resource Machine, and Duskers, um, decided to just uh, step Grim Dawn down a little bit to uh, give myself some time. <laughs> um, and Dungeon Guardians, I just play it every day because I'm just really enjoying it. That That's my um, favorite game of the moment. Path of Exile, I'm doing it every day because I need 20 to 25 episodes to cover a full playthrough through the game and the, the league only lasts for a month. So, yeah, doing it daily seems useful, but I'm recording it in burst, you know, three, four episodes at a time, uh, eight on the, the launch day. So that that's, I can do something on the weekends and just burst it through. Um, so I have a bit more time, I mean, because no, um, during, work during the day, I just work for a living. Uh, and it's in the evenings, in my spare evenings, and in the weekends, that's when I uh, record things I'm still doing. And pff, YouTube, uh, you're not gonna get rich, get rich quick. Let's keep it at that. Um, I've been, I started in January, uh, took a couple break, but basically I, I started for real since May this year. I have, I have a number somewhere. Yeah, because the, the video count, that's also uh, another metric, of course. Uh, where is it? Come on. I had that number somewhere. I think it was over 260 videos. Which is quite a number. 272. That's currently what I've... The, 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 the video count on my channel that I've recorded. There's a couple of things that are still queued for... Uh, are scheduled for release in the coming days, but up 272 videos. So that's quite a lot. Um, I mean, my my original game was at least once a day. Currently, I'm doing two to three videos per day. Uh, most videos last 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, assume that every video, just recording it, doing the sound check. <laughs> I've got a lot better at doing the sound check, making sure that the setup is right, that the sound is right, that I'm recording so the, the game volume. I've messed up a couple of times with that, that, uh, that, that all the things are right. Uh, setting it up, recording the actual game. Sometimes I record more, more footage um, or I have some weird break in between or I get a phone call and I forgot to turn off my phone or something like that. So then afterwards I need to do some editing to you know, cut out the bits that are not useful. Um, case of Path of Exile, I might cut out some town stops. Case of the human resource machine, I might cut out some dead ends with solutions that didn't go anywhere but did take up time. So there might be some editing involved. So, And then afterwards I need to upload it to YouTube. While I'm uploading, I write a description and a title, uh, make up some text, things like that. Do some scheduling, uh, make a picture or uh, a thumbnail for the video, all stuff like that. So basically every episode takes about an hour. Even if I'm only recording 20 minutes of video, it probably takes about an hour. Um, so if I'm recording two to three episodes a day, that's gonna be take two to three hours a day. Uh, if I wanna record a bit in advance, it might take four or five hours a day. That basically just covers an all evening. But now if I work a bit in advance, I basically buy myself an evening to do something like play Legacy of the Void, which I actually did uh, three missions earlier today, and it was pretty fun. Um, so that, that's nice to blow off some steam. Maybe more? I think I was going somewhere. Losing my train of thought again. Uh. So, yeah. I think that's, that's it. But basically, I'm just going to continue with this. So, Path of Exile runs until I'm done with the current series and I'm taking a short break. Um, Grim Dawn, step up the, the, the pace to take over from Path of Exile. Um, at least every two days, maybe even daily, depends a bit on, on just how busy it gets and how many new games I discover. Dungeon Guardian is going to continue with that until I'm done with the playthrough. Uh, or until I get bored of it, but I don't actually foresee that happening anytime soon. Duskers recording once a week, just to uh, 
keep up with development um, and waiting for basically for more content or a stealth module which is gonna make things more interesting human resource machine currently yeah doing two a week um, I think that's about right since it, it does take a bit more time but maybe if path of exile falls away I free up a little bit more time so maybe I can do some extras or no pick up some extra games like uh, doing some some uh, episodes for TS 100 or new things you know Starcraft just launched today. I am not covering it because that would be yet another series that I will be committing to. Um, Fallout 4 got launched. Uh, I looked at some, some people streaming it and it really didn't look like my kind of game. So I'm skipping that even though there's a lot of hype. And if I was just a pure, purely interested in the clicks and the views, I should cover it. But I don't care and I only cover games I actually like on this channel because I want to do this for a long time um, and that way you need to do it because it's fun not because it's good for the clicks or the money or whatever and as I said before YouTube it's not gonna make you rich until you have a big channel and 55 f uh, follow uh, subscribers like all of you but yeah uh, yeah it's not the road to riches just yet so yeah well that's it that's uh more than half an hour of ramblings about the state of the gate of the channel where i was where i'm at and where i am going so if history is going to repeat itself i'll see you in about two months thank you for watching and bye bye